head of the European Economic and Trade Office uh, here. And I'm sure there are many representatives of European Union member states here as well, and distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. Initially, I thought this was going to be a very easy dinner. <laughs> but listening to what these two gentlemen have to say just now, it's not going to be easy. Huh? <laughs> they have tough issues for us. <laughs> we deal with that, but not tonight. <laughs> I believe this is my fifth time attending the Europe Day dinner. I must say I am very happy to be here and to see you all in good spirits and health. And I want to start by thanking Chairman Easel for his invitation today. And I want to again express my gratitude to Representative Jokowiczewski, the European Union and its member states for supporting Taiwan's inclusion in the World Health Organization. Now, uh, there was some discussion about energy transition here. So my appreciation also goes out to sectors of the EU for their staunch support of Taiwan's renewable energy sector and policies. I see your step there. I understand we were supposed to gather here uh, a few months ago for this dinner, but I had to uh, reschedule because of the pandemic. Uh, even though we had to wait a while, I'm still very happy to see you all here, as I know that everyone here has been diligent in your effort to combat the spread of COVID-19. Now, Taiwan has been proactive in containing the pandemic at home and assisting countries around the world to do the same. But I have to apologize that if you told me earlier I would uh, allow expatriates here to send face marks back home. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now, take the production of face marks, uh, for example, prior to the outbreak. Taiwan was producing just 1.8 million face marks per day, but by mid-May, we had become the second largest producer of face marks uh, in the world, making more than 20 million marks uh, per day. Um, we realized the importance of self-sufficiency in producing strategic supplies to deal with uh, this health crisis and work quickly to upgrade our production capacity. Now, after production reached our set goal, Taiwan donated more than 51 million masks to more than 80 countries around the world. Now, a large portion of these made in, China, in Taiwan masks went to our friends in Europe uh, via REST, REST EU and bilateral channels. The EU willingly reciprocated and recently came to Taiwan's aid. Last month, an outbreak of lumpy skin disease was affecting cattle in Jinmen. The EU was quick to provide Taiwan with the necessary vaccines to deal with the outbreak. The vaccine shipment arrives in Kingman in the nick of time and elevated many farmers' worries. I must say thank you to you. In addition, Taiwan and the EU are collaborating to develop test kits, vaccines and treatment for COVID-19, as well as exchange PPE, that is personal protective equipment, and medical supplies. These are just a few examples of the solid partnership between Taiwan and the European Union. 
This year, Taiwan and member states of the EU are facing many challenges brought on by the pandemic. In a critical time like the one we are faced with now, we have the opportunity to rethink and reorganize international supply chains and economic strategy. Cooperation between Taiwan and the EU could construct supply chains for pandemic prevention materials could be the first step to an even more mutually beneficial partnership. This can also be the beginning of more diversified, resilient supply chains. Taiwan and EU share the core values of democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. So Taiwan should naturally be the EU's trusted partner for economic collaboration. I know this year's Europe Day dinner was originally planned to mark the 70th anniversary of the Summers Declaration and to highlight 70 years of economic progress and cooperation between Taiwan and the EU. Now, through the years, the relationship Taiwan and EU share has become increasingly robust. Last year, the European Chamber of Commerce, Taiwan, for the first time, had more than 400 institutional members and over 900 individual members. Also last year, our bilateral trade with the EU reached a historical high of, as you mentioned, 58.7 billion US dollars. In addition to this, EU investments in Taiwan set a record last year. At the end of June this year, foreign direct investment from the EU reached 57 billion US dollars, marking a 65% jump over the past five years. The contributions of so many European businesses in Taiwan are the reason for <coughs> our excellent progress. Businesses like Carrefour place faith in Taiwan to be the heart of their Asian operation. Companies such as Philips played an important role in the development of Taiwan's electronics industry and helped jumpstart Taiwan's integrated circuit miracle. Recently, companies such as YPT and Ostec have been increasing their investments and expanding operation in Taiwan. In addition, the Yang and Nail Group and the Demon have also been involved in building our offshore wind energy sector. Of course, you do have things uh, to talk to us about, and um, we'll deal with these uh, issues uh, diligently. <laughs> um, I know there are difficult issues for you, like localization requirements. But um, this is uh, something uh, we ask foreign company to help in order to build a local industry. And um, in the long term, it's going to be helpful for the European firms as well because we together can expand the market in this part of the world and so that um, we can have built actually a good supply chain here. So um, there are also 20 British companies who have set up offices here, providing training on all aspects of offshore wind development and construction. Uh, is the UK part of the EU now? Uh, <laughs> now, I would like also to take this opportunity to express my appreciation to all the companies, both domestic and foreign, that have been involved in the development of Taiwan's offshore wind energy. Um, we cherish your contribution to the realization of a greener, more sustainable future. While European businesses contributed to Taiwan's economic progress, Taiwan, on the other hand, also contributed to economic development in European countries as well. For example, a number of Taiwanese companies such as Foxconn, ASUS, Acer, and AUO invested in Czech Republic's uh, electronics 
and ICT sectors, creating 23,000 jobs. In addition, Slovakia is now home to an AUO facility producing LCD equipment. The plant produces large-size LCDs and is AUO's second manufacturing base in Europe. Taiwan's world leader in bicycle manufacturing, Giant, set up its second largest European facility in Hungary in 2018. This came after its first facility in the Netherlands, which was producing half a million high-end bicycles each year. Aside from maintaining our steadfast economic ties, Taiwan also welcomed visits from an increasing number of government officials from European countries, delegations, and representatives from France, the UK, Denmark, Luxembourg, Belgium, and the Netherlands, just to name a few. All visited Taiwan over the past year. And at this time, we are delighted to welcome the delegation led by Czech Republic's uh, Senate President Mr. Sale here in Taiwan. During the past 70 years, both Taiwan and Europe have endured hardship and conflict. We have also overcome adversities and weathered many challenges, both politically and on the path to economic integration and development. Now, at this critical juncture, as we enter into a time of uncertainty. I believe that it is not more important than ever for Taiwan and Europe to come together and further our collaboration while contributing to the world. Not only do we have solid economic ties, we are also connected by our shared values. By beginning discussion for a bilateral investment agreement, we can open the door to an even more concrete partnership. In conclusion, let me say this. 2020 has been a year of many challenges. Taiwan and the EU have already overcome many obstacles in the trying time, in this trying time. The future will undoubtedly be positive and prosperous if we work together as partners and friends. I want to once again thank Chairman Iso, Representative Jagodzewski, and all the EU member state representatives and partners for your con continued friendship and support for Taiwan. And I look forward to the next chapter of the Taiwan-EU partnership and the fantastic achievements we will make together. Lastly, I wish you all happiness and of course good health and a wonderful evening. Thank you all. For